Welcome to Andrew's Workshop Projects. This is part 15. After building a Stuart S50 steam engine, here is the next project. And it is something that I did not recommend. A Stuart Models triple expansion engine. This is the easy part, opening the box. But getting it from what's inside this box to this standard is incredibly difficult. This particular engine I bought from a man called Ronnie Mall in Scotland. A time served engineer who was very talented. The engineering standard is extremely high and it runs really well. I made a short video series about it. Here's another one that I rebuilt. The strange clicking noises that you can hear are from the vacuum pump and the water pump. I rebuilt this engine a while ago and it really took me quite a long time. I even stopped the series for a while to regroup my thoughts because this job was difficult. Here is the traditional unboxing ceremony. And now, as usual, it's over to the live workshop audio. A large piece of gasket material. And here's the cladding. It's difficult to see from what's on this card what the metals are. For instance, that and that and that and that. Those are cast iron. But this part should be gunmetal. A lot of work. It's a Stuart triple expansion engine. In comparison to building a steam railway engine, is it? Yes, it's far more difficult than a railway engine. Really? Because a lot of railway engine parts are routine, you know, drilling the frames. It depends to what the standard is you're building to. Some of the ones in magazines are scarily difficult to build. But a random engine like the Sleepy thing I'm working on, I bought it part built and it's a bit of a mess but I did that just to save time for the videos. But I've worked on a triple expansion engine that was much further on than this and I had to take some time off at one stage. These are the cylinder castings, they actually fit this way around. And as you can see there's a lot to do. The next clip is the triple expansion engine that I worked on as I received it. It's actually a clip from the video I made. If only I'd realised how difficult it was going to be. In this series I intend to finish this engine to a good standard. In my opinion, from what I can see here, most of the hard work seems to have been done. My opinion on the castings and making this engine is one day at a time and just try and make it to the best of my ability from the drawing. I do wish though sometimes the drawings had tolerances on them, but I suppose they're from way back and tolerances, give or take, weren't really mentioned then. I worry more about the state of the castings. On this one for instance, there's an awful lot of fettling to do before you even start the machining process. I spoke to Andy at Stuart Models a while ago about this and he said, we can't win because if we fettle the castings, people say, oh well I wanted to do that. So I do get the point. There's probably a good week's work just getting these castings before you put them in the mill or the lathe. Yeah, it's a bit like painting, it's all in the preparation. I mean, the castings look okay. You may find that you start to machine and find blowholes. Yeah, but Stuarts are very good with that. They'll always replace the casting if that's the case. Very true. As you can see, the ports are cast in, which is a, a very good thing. And you see the difference between the high pressure and low pressure ports, they're very different. And the low pressure ports look like they're not right, but they will be by the time they're machined off flat. So it's a lot of work with a belt sander for me to start this job. Thankfully I'm not doing it. You're a better man than I, Andrew. What else have we got? We have the sole plate, here it is. And obviously this bit needs knocking out altogether. Andrew's had to buy a special drill bit just to drill this hole. It's a three quarters of an inch diameter imperial twist drill. Not metric Andrew, what's going on? I've even bought a 3 8 reamer. Why? Because it was nine and a half millimetres and you can't do eight, you can't do nine, you can't do ten, you've got to do nine and a half. What's that for? The crank journal. Really? Yeah. You'll even learn. Steam chest cover. 
steam chest, another steam chest cover and another steam chest. So where's the third steam chest? The answer to that is it is part of the casting here. I've made a series about rebuilding one of these and if you want to see more details of how I completed one have a look at the video. But this should be very interesting because Andrew's machining skills are actually far better than mine and I freely admit this. And he likes doing it which is the main thing. And he's got machines with DROs on full of numbers which makes my brain hurt. Andrew is going to make a special design of crankshaft using this piece of steel. It's extremely heavy and it's something I would rather not do. I would always build up a crankshaft with individual components, bearing in mind this one has three crank pins, lots of crank webs and it's very long. The main benefit of building a crankshaft using individual components is you can use silver steel for the main shaft down the middle that is ground to the right size. Explain to the viewers, Andrew, what you're going to do with those. Normally those are machined as a pair and split. I think you split them first. I haven't really looked into it. But I think you split them. You, you made the pair of those. They were machined as a pair. I used one and had to make a brand new one at the other side. You need a very thin parting tool to get them to size. Right, so what I'm going to do is not only make the crankshaft out of the solid, I'm actually going to make the eccentrics in the solid as well, all at the same time. Let me just recap while I think about this. Andrew's saying not only is he going to machine the crankshaft from this piece of metal, my shoe has got another 10 pieces of metal like this on the floor. Only I think one. You may need oh, go on then. Go on then. He intends to make the crankshaft with three cranks and also including pre machined eccentrics in exactly the right place on the crankshaft rather than use a sort of clamp on casting well best of luck I mean I just couldn't do it I'm not good enough for that in fact I shall phone the Samaritans when I get back are you sure yeah why do you do things radically different that sometimes work and sometimes don't why don't you take the middle ground and do it the easy way don't think we'd be on the moon if we did that I'll just be very surprised. I do it because of the challenge and I've got another piece of metal just in case it doesn't work. This internal combustion engine was one of Andrew's early attempts and the machining standard is well to say the least extremely good but it's still sat in its component parts. I suggested that he puts it together as a display piece to show all the components because the problem with internal combustion engines is there's a lot of work when they're together you don't see much moving other than the crankshaft or the propeller but look at the work in this here's one of the poppet valves and it's made from stainless steel and look at the rest of it I've shown this image quite a few times in the videos I make when I come to Andrew's workshop because it's an impressive thing but here he's going to go one step beyond this to a Stuart triple expansion engine and you have to believe me when I say they are not easy to make. And even when you've made all the parts, getting them to run is a bit of witchcraft. So to make the crankshaft, I'm going to pop three holes for the crank throws. Obviously a centre hole. And then two holes, or centre holes, for that bit. And then... Pop the holes the other side. I shall do that on the mill, make sure everything's straight, uh, and then it'll go back into the lathe. I was thinking about doing it in the mill and just turning it like that and milling it down, but I'd like to make it in the lathe. This part that you're looking at is not at 180 degrees. If you look at the drawing, the three eccentric pairs are all slightly different. I think a high pressure is 30 degrees yeah. and the intermediate and low pressure of 15. The Stuart triple expansion engine that I rebuilt had this part built as a clamp on idea. I'm going to hand you over to Andrew to ask him how to machine this to make it split and clampable onto the crankshaft. I think what I would do is I would split it, machine it flat as two pieces and I might silver solder it together 
and then machine it down as one piece, drill and tap the holes that clamp it together. Split it first, but then you have to machine the two surfaces, but in order to continue the machining process, it needs to go back together into one unit. Soft solder wouldn't work, but silver solder on cast iron would work, and then you just machine it in the normal way. Question, Keith, why wouldn't soft solder work? I don't think it works well with cast iron because, because of the carbon. I've never tried to soft solder cast iron. I'm sure some experts may tell me that I'm wrong, but I've never tried to solder cast iron with soft solder. Right. Cast iron can be either brazed, silver soldered or welded, but welding is not recommended because the localised hardening makes it impossible to machine. Andrew knows about this. It's a similar thing to what happens if you try and machine a chilled steam chest cover. So welding is definitely out of the question, but silver soldering should work fine. So what's the price for getting it right then, Keith? I'm thinking about this. What's the price for getting it right? A season ticket to a sanatorium. Your favourite sanatorium? Yeah, it's one I've had experience of in the past. <laughs> As opposed to your not favourite one. I mean, I used to be a musician. That was worse than doing this. Some of the jobs I've had as a musician would make your toes curl, but that's another story. That's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.